Good morning and welcome to Holy Cross Faith Memorial Episcopal Church on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. Indeed, our beloved Jesus Christ has risen and we can collectively shout hallelujah. We are so happy that you've joined us and have a blessed day.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A lesson from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 118 by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected 
has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. second lesson this morning is from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is, done, he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them they told briefly to those around Peter, and afterwards Jesus himself sent out through them, from the east to the west, the, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. From Acts 10, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. In churches, all around the world on this day, a, a funny thing happens, even dangerous, you may say, in light of the almost three million deaths related to the novel coronavirus. Preachers from protected pulpits, much like this one, will do something rather foolish. We will mock death. We say with the poet John Donne, 
One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Actually, we taunt it. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But another funny thing will happen, but not today. I'm talking about tomorrow. It happens every year, even last year, and the year before that, and so on. It's called Monday morning. And on Monday mornings, we wake up and we get back to something that we have come to understand as life. We look at the news to see how much of our country or our freedoms or our collective sanity we have lost. We look at the week ahead at our jobs or schoolwork just to see how far we've slipped behind. We look at the quarterly financial statement just to see how much of the future we have lost. In other words, on the day after celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, we will begin to worry about the future. The thread that connecting his resurrection in our lives, always fragile at best, begins to unravel on Monday morning. After all, the event itself suffers from a distinct lack of verification. It's not accessible to us by any of the media, social or otherwise, to which we have become so addicted. The most important event in the history of the world was not transacted between armies or nations or even Facebook friends, but between God the Father and God the Son by the power of God the Holy Spirit. It happened in darkness. We don't know if it was a typically warm Palestinian morning or if it was unseasonably cool. We don't know if it thundered or lightninged or if it was strangely calm and quiet and still. We don't know what he looked like when he was no longer dead, whether he burst from the tomb in heavenly light or came out as Lazarus did, slowly unwrapping his bandages and squinting with wonder at the dawn. All these things and more, we don't know. But no matter all the scientific or historical reasons to deny the resurrection, I just can't make that leap into unbelief. And I bet I'm not alone. So mocking death today becomes a bit more understandable. But let us not mock God by making the resurrection any less magnificent, any less powerful, any less real. As John Updike writes, let us not seek to make it less monstrous. But that's exactly what we do, isn't it? We have a way of making the exact theme, thing we proclaim today less monstrous. Now, one way we do that is treating the resurrection as something that can be limited to the past, forgetting that the past is far too small a canvas for God to work on, forgetting that the past is just a patch. It's just a facet of what Augustine called God's great today. But if the resurrection can be limited only to the past, then we do have every right to worry about the future on Monday morning. The second way we make the resurrection less than monstrous is when we treat it as a band-aid for the wound of personal mortality, a topic to be discussed only on Easter Sunday and at funerals, when we trot out the resurrection as if it is an insurance policy against the loss of life. And true enough, Jesus' resurrection from the dead is God's own testimony against death but it's God's power for ministry. And this is important for today, for we will renew our baptismal covenant, our papers for the ministry of the baptized, our diploma as ministers, because we are not called to be mere spectators in the ministry of Jesus, but participants. And these are not two separate themes, victory over death, power for ministry. They are one theme. For at the heart of all meaningful ministry, and that's the kind of ministry that we are called to, at the heart of all meaningful ministry, there is meaningful engagement with death in all its forms. Not two themes, but one. From the very beginning, 
the New Testament connects the resurrection with our life as Christians, our life as ministry. Three times in the last chapter of Matthew, either the angel or the risen Christ says, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell the good news. The Gospel of Mark connects the resurrection with amazing feats of ministry performed by ordinary people just like you and me. And in the Gospel of John, the resurrected Jesus goes against convention and chooses a woman to be the first apostle. But I'm sad to say, Mary Magdalene never got a chance to take even a selfie with him. But she, along with others, carried a picture of him wherever she went. Not a literal photograph, but the early church had a memory of Jesus that made its ministry to the world possible. And that reading from Acts 10 is a condensed version of that corporate memory, namely that Jesus was anointed by the Spirit with power, that he went about doing good and healing those who were afflicted, that God was with him, that he was put to death on a tree that God raised him on the third day. They took this narrative portrait of the risen Lord much in the way that the Jews had carried the Ark of the Covenant into battle, into every situation of ministry they faced. What they had was a narrative portrait. And it was not a historical or scientific equivalent of a digital photo. It was a story, a telling of miraculous events. But it was him. And they knew him by it. How did they know him when he was no longer with them? How did those early Christians know him when they were off in those dusty places all over the Near Eastern world? How? Peter gives the answer. Why, we ate and drank with him after he was raised from the dead. No recreation of the early days, no details of him coming out of the tomb. But rather, like us, our brothers and sisters ate and drank with him. And in a year where we didn't eat and drink with each other all that much, perhaps we have a renewed sense of how meaningful breaking bread together is. Just as it is important to notice who Jesus broke bread with. Because, yeah, it would have been easier if the risen Christ had just reappeared to Pontius Pilate or walked in on the chief priests and scribes one day in the office and said, hey, how y'all doing? That would have cleared a whole lot of things up. But the truth is, he would have shown himself to Pilate had Pilate been at the Lord's table or been out there ministering in those cities and cemeteries and prisons where the, resur where the resurrected Jesus always shows up. But I want to make this part clear. We're talking about resurrection here, not resuscitation. Now, remember Lazarus, the guy that Jesus raised, the guy that was Jesus' friend. That story that gives us the, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus brought him back to life, but it was the same life. Lazarus was restored to how he was before he got ill and died. He was the same age. He had the same body, the same brain. He kept the same personality and character. He was normal, physical, material stuff. He was limited to being in one place at one time. He was compelled to obey the laws of silent science. If you pricked him, he would bleed. If you gave him a virus, he'd feel its symptoms. Lazarus got ill, died, was resuscitated, and then one day died again. But this is Easter, and we are called to look for more. We are called to look for resurrection and to bring others to look for that as well. I don't want mere resuscitation for us, or for our church, for our town, for our state, for our country, or for our world. And just as those early Christians never went back to life before Jesus, I don't want things to be normal again. Mere resuscitation is not enough. When we've been given the opportunity to stop, and slow down, suspend normality, examine our lives, 
Why would we want to go right back to the way it used to be? I want resurrection. I want transformation. It is Easter. And so we dare to imagine and hope and believe in a world that has learned painful lessons both from a virus and from injustice and will resolve to create a new reality. My sisters and brothers, resurrection is nothing less than transformation, a new creation, a new life, a whole new world. How can we even hope to live in this manner? How can we begin life, not just again, but anew? Well, I'll tell you. Because the right hand of the Lord has triumphed. Because, alleluia, Christ has risen. Because now we can recognize the risen Christ when we see him in the world. And we will see him. For he is our pillar of fire who goes out ahead of us not only into Galilee, but into our very lives. So go and tell. Go and tell. Go and tell. Christ has risen, and so will we. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you and that your name may be glorified 
by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Will and Ryan, our clergy, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, Henry, our governor, Tom, our congressman, and Tim and Lindsay, our senators, and for all who govern and hold authority in the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will, especially in the Episcopal Church Women Ministry, and in all that we undertake, that our works might find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the birthdays of Claudia Stowe, Brian Monroe, Isabel Hoy, Nick Hoy, Elsie Wheeler, Ron Engel, and Tonya Simmons, and for the birth of Brian and Beth's granddaughter, Virginia Grace Monroe. Today we offer our prayers for parish members, Jim McBride, Ira Thomas, Brandon Knox, Katie Harris, Aaron Ufelder, Libby Lundball, Marcia Kaminsky, Rita Schreier and family, Sue Myers, Jordan Taylor, Alex Spivey, Dot Bonds, Bridget Popolars, Joan Sherman, Ron Engel, Shirley Gossett, Denise Skiles, Florence Jones, Nancy Bride, Rosalind Tyree, Christopher Atkins, Miles Mummert, Jackie Roby, Jeff Warner, Ryan Smith, Doug Billings, and Randy Eckert. For the friends of this parish who are sick or suffering, and for all those others who protect us at home and abroad, especially Midway Fire Rescue. In the Austin cycle of prayer, we remember the Episcopal Church at Ocotee. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. And give to the departed, especially Ralph Griffin, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, and we, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray now for our own needs and for those of others. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. Raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace and Easter greetings with loved ones near or far, perhaps by sharing this Easter worship video. On this day, the Lord has acted. Jesus Christ is risen. Let us rejoice and be glad.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, in the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.